Under the uh, alias of Mr. Social Grace, Charles Purdy is an etiquette expert. He makes a living providing helpful advice. He has compiled his expertise for his new book, Urban Etiquette, which will be out in, uh, I guess, the middle of May, correct? Yes. Yeah, please welcome Charles Purdy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No, it's really... Uh, um, you brought me a box of chocolates because you're so polite. Oh, yes, a host gift, of course. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> you're gift welcome. for the host. Right? Yes. And, and what is your policy on regifting? Let's say I didn't really need a box of chocolates in my life. You know, regifting, if you can do it where the original giver never, ever finds out, then I don't have to know about it and I don't, I don't, I don't say it's against the rules. Right, so me pulling it out and giving it back to you is not cool. Yeah, or giving it to someone <laughs> in the audience would yeah. say, here, thanks for coming. Well, after you have gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, after I've gone That'd and if it's perfect. not on the Air. <laughs> so you know you have come to a country that is so polite it's almost nauseating. You have to understand that if I step on your toe, you will say you're sorry. That's well, you know, and that's a good thing. Every both people should apologize in that instance. But I think in big cities, even here, I think there can be a tendency to you know, think that anonymity protects you, that the people around you don't know you, and that's one of the that's the one of the biggest dangers I think of living in a city, and that's why I address urban specifically in my book. Good morning, boys. At the sound of the bell, please report to Chivalry 101 with Professor Charles Purdy. My name is Charles Purdy. I'm the author of the book, Urban Etiquette, and I'm here to talk to you all about what being a chivalrous person means in modern times. So to start off, these are some of the things that are not gentlemanly or not chivalrous. The first problem women have with men is that they talk too much about themselves. If there's going to be hugging of new acquaintances going on, you should let the, the woman initiate it. A gentleman can express his dislikes and disagreements without insulting someone. A lot of things a lot of guys did not know. I am a woman you work with. My name is Mary Smith and we're at a party we've just met okay. and you are introducing us okay um hey mary i have uh, my brother i want, would like you to meet mark this is mary Corey. smith the woman always extends her hand first if she's going to have her hand shaken a man never forces a woman to shake hands if she doesn't want to so what would be the best time to ask their age if you really want to know you just never do when never you when do. you when she wants you to know she'll tell you we are sitting next to each other at an airport and our flight has been delayed. I made a heavy sigh and glanced at you. <sighs> <laughs> I guess Greyhound would have been a better option, huh? Yes, I think so. Maybe it would have. I don't know. Now what do you do? I'm going to leave her alone. Very good. All right. serving up an etiquette refresher course. That's right, we're going to teach you how to be polite. And here to help remind us of, you know, our P's and Q's is a man known as Mr. Social Grace, and he's the author of a book called Urban Etiquette. Please welcome Charles Purdy. Hi, Charles. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, I got to tell you, I'm crazy, and when I was growing up, I did read Emily Post's Pocket Book of Etiquette cover to cover, and it's been all about her and Miss Manners for decades. Mm -hmm. But you actually say that the rules of etiquette have changed? They have changed a little bit. There's some new informality and some new technology that we've had to adapt to, but the fundamentals of good manners are really the same as they've always been. It's all about treating people with respect and communicating that respect in ways that everyone can understand. I know this is like a no-no mm -hmm. to have phones on the table or nearby, mm -hmm. but I do have two and four years old at home and they need me. So where do I put my phone when all this is going on? That's totally in my lap? No, that's on vibrate? totally uh, in your lap on vibrate. And it could be fun. That's what I do. It could be fun. That's you know, it's <laughs> cell phones cell phones themselves are not rude. It's how people use them. Cell phones are a great new technology for keeping in touch with a babysitter, for example. If you're expecting an urgent call at a restaurant, before you sit down, you can tell your table mates, I'm expecting an important call. I may have to leave the table suddenly. Oh. And when your cell phone on vibrate does ring, yeah. Excuse me, get up, and you should take your phone call in the part of the restaurant where the public phones are. That's the part of the restaurant where phone calls oh, are well, to be made. Oh, well, my hubby needs to be kicked out, because, <laughs> yeah. honey, he doesn't abide by that at all. I'm here with all of my friends, and to help us make sure 
that all of my friends have a good Thanksgiving celebration this year is the author of Urban Etiquette, Mr. Social Grace himself, Charles Purdy. Thank you. Hello, Charles. Hi, thanks for having me. When you're served uh, meat on the bone, you're, you should eat as much as you can with your fork and knife before you pick it up, then it is quite all right to pick it up See? with both hands so you're not holding it like you would hold a baseball bat eat to hit as somebody. Much, eat, as eat as much, much with your fork and knife exactly. first. Exactly. Eat oh. as much with your fork and knife first. Yes. And then if you're serving small bones, a big drumstick like these, though, if I was the host, I think I'd carve it in the kitchen and then serve the slices. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Here's where the context of etiquette comes in again. Like, there are barbecues at your brother's house with your close family where helping yourself to their cooking supplies is perfectly okay. Uh -oh. But most situations, I would say helping yourself, the barbecue is like their stove. I would yeah. say helping yourself to your host's mm. stove and cooking utensils is a little bit presumptuous. If the food is... If the food. If the food is inedible, like if there's a, if it's raw chicken that is actually posing mm -hmm. a danger, then I think maybe you could speak to your hostess or your host privately, quietly, so other guests can't hear and have the cooking insult in front of them, and just let them know, I think there's a problem. Good morning, Henry. Good morning. Charles Purdy is Mr. Social Grace, uh, and he's written this book, Urban Etiquette, and it's about modern day manners. Right. Um, and we're going to talk about modern day manners and perhaps a little about Victorian. Please have a seat. Thank, Thank you, you, Henry. You notice he stood up when I came to the table? Is Absolutely. That is that Absolutely. Still yes, when you're receiving a guest, uh, especially if she's a lady and you're a gentleman, it's uh, wise to stand well, up. Well, I'm not, but thank you anyway. Uh, now, uh, what about the business of the hat? Now, they, you know, they wouldn't let me wear a hat here into the Green Man Inn. And uh, that's very good, and it's still true today. Uh, really? A gentleman does not wear a hat at the table. What does one do about hat head, then? Uh, it's better to have a little bit of hat head than to look like a boor with his hat on at the dinner table, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Could you stare right into that camera there and show us some of the silent looks? Well... A good one is if you are, it's a middling t transgression, is surprise silence, which looks like this. And that would be in reaction <laughs> to what? Now, if, if I said, if I'm on a bus, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that you're crowding my space, and mm -hmm. I go, excuse me, yikes. It's the cool one more time, one more time for a close-up. <laughs> excuse me, wow. It's the cool level stare. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and again, you have to practice these at home. It's hard not to move your eyebrows, but that's very important to keep your eyebrows level at that one. 